to say that Katie Waisel joins me now. Hi, Katie. Hi. Oh my gosh. I did, thank you for just the most wonderful introduction. I can't believe that you even mentioned about the Green Eyed World, which I hold so dear to my heart, which uh, was prior to that show. I um, just, I, I just want to say I was so also blown away by uh, what Edwina Corey was saying just now. And uh, I really appreciated that. So um, as you know, somebody that's just finished law school and understands public law, um, I was really actually moved by what she was saying and I understand where she was coming from. So oh, that, that's, uh, that that's really X factor. That's really interesting. Did you, you felt that uh, Edwina was right to say that Ursula von der Leyen must uh, frame her language very carefully as the leader of the EU Commission in relation to national elections? I think that everybody as a whole should frame their language, uh, you know, yeah. with, with a, a different, I guess, uh, approach and understanding. Uh, we we live in a very transparent world these days where, mm. you know, people are, are, are so connected globally with online um, channels that they create. But uh, and rightly so, people are giving the voice, uh, the voice is a voice. Um, and you can't hide behind uh, a ministerial code anymore. Um, the truth comes out. Do you know what I'm saying? So there is a way that, rightly or wrongly, whatever this person's intent is, there is a way to handle it, uh, which is respect respectable and kind and for the for the future generations. Otherwise, they're just going to end up archaic and Jurassic like the law itself. But that's just me. I think opinion. you're absolutely right about that. And I think that it's just it's just bad politics, really, isn't it? Well, look, you are a lawyer now. Congratulations. You've had lots of careers. You were an innovator on on online uh, sort of streaming and uh, YouTube and Facebook, all of that. You you a very talented songwriter and singer. You got your break on the X Factor. Did it change your life, Katie, for the better or the worse? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I just want to make a couple of amendments to that narrative is that I didn't get my break on the X Factor. If anything, it was uh, unfortunately and very sadly um, uh, something that was quite destructive. Um, and that's putting it politely. Um, so. I speak as much as I can um, in a way that I can about my experience on there, um, uncovering and rediscovering information. Now that I understand contract law, I'm able to relook through things and decipher what was really absolutely beyond imaginably unacceptable um, and the mistreatment of a lack of duty of care. Um, to not only myself, but there were minors on the show at the time. Uh, so in relation to your question, whether it was a making or breaking of me, uh, I guess 12 and a bit years on, I'd like to think that uh, I'm turning poison into medicine now with all that we are campaigning for and fighting for. Uh, I mean, are you able I'm to elaborate? Katie, are you, yeah. if you're comfortable, are you able to elaborate on the negatives of your experience or the poison, as you, as you refer to it as? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and it's taken me quite some time to, to get to a point where I uh, speak about it comfortably. I, I will never speak about it comfortably. But, um, but basically, there was uh, so much coercion, manipulation, um, things that happened that, you know, I can only but speak for myself and I'll just say that off the bat, cool. but, um, you know, when faced with such fear of the outside world, when, you know, you would only but, I guess, be told to trust the people that were around you, um, it, and then later on, understand that that wasn't the absolute case at all. So I know I'm talking a bit in riddles here. Basically, I never wanted to go on the show in the first place. I didn't. And I really am so um, apprehensive about really disclosing it. But I'm telling myself in the back of my mind, no, just just speak on it. It's OK. Um, 
I didn't want to go on the show in the first place. As you said, um, I, I did the show with the Coca-Cola company. Um, and this was prior to the X factor. And I was very proud of the um, immense hard work and efforts I'd put into my promising, I guess, career as a singer and a songwriter since I was 17. Um, so when I had filed my police report um, for something, um, I tugged at a string that unraveled quite a lot. Um, a, that I really wasn't even expecting to unravel, but it just unveiled a lot of manipulation and coercion and um, illegality, to be very frank. It, it sounds, it does sound absolutely appalling. My heart goes out to you and I, I hope that you're able to to, you know, amplify this message about how you were treated so mm -hmm. others don't suffer the same fate. Uh, briefly, Katie, and I apologise because the clock's against us, but uh, do you think it still goes on on these singing shows? And would you discourage a young star like you were back in the day to now do them? Um, I'll never discourage anybody to, uh, to follow their dreams and follow their heart. What I encourage mm -hmm. is, um, and I'm pleading with the government right now, is for education uh, in schools, um, on TikTok, or social media platforms, um, to at least uh, provide the the fundamental tools. Like my charity, the Owl Foundation, is is doing um, currently with One Direction fans um, and people that former formerly worked on the show is is educating people about the, the rights and wrongs, what to look out for from a legal standpoint, how yeah. important mental health support is and things like this. So I would never discourage anybody from following their dreams. Um, it just needs to be done in the right way. And I think that the, the first port of call is legislation.